Hello, my name is Elliot Gu. I'm editor of Personal Finance and the Energy Strategist. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about one particular energy subsector, uh, which is coal uh, and coal mining. Uh, we got our first earnings report from a major uh, US-based coal company, uh, Arch Coal, uh, on the 19th of April. Um, and actually I think this uh, earnings report is very interesting for a number of reasons. Uh, one thing to, to note is that Arch has not been uh, symbol as ACI. Uh, it's not been one of the coal companies that, that I've preferred or recommended in uh, personal finance or in uh, the Energy Strategist. Uh, in fact, I've had the company rated a hold in the Energy Strategist uh, for, uh, for some time now, for over a year. Um, and the main reason for that is that Arch is a company that's pretty much totally focused on the U.S. market. Um, something like 80% of their production uh, is from an area of the U.S. called the Powder River Basin. Uh, out sort of around uh, Wyoming uh, in the western part of the U.S. Uh, most PRB coal is surface coal. Um, in other words, it's not mined from underground mines, but it's mined from basically the surface of the earth uh, using essentially strip mining type techniques. Typically, companies use what's called a drag line, uh, which is a sort of a large bucket uh, that is used to scrape earth away from the top of the coal uh, uh, deposit, uh, and then they're able to mine the coal um, directly. Um, it's a very cheap way to produce coal. Um, coal from the PRB has very, very low sulfur content, uh, it's, but it does have low energy content as well. Uh, and it is primarily steam coal or thermal coal used in power plants, uh, not metallurgical coal uh, used uh, in steel, uh, steel manufacturing. Uh, so one of the reasons I've avoided um, ACI here over the last year is that Arch is totally focused mainly on selling thermal coal to U.S. utilities. During the recession of 2008-2009, uh, U.S. electricity demand declined. As a result, um, you know, uh, U.S. utilities were scaling back their output, uh, and that meant that they actually built up very large stockpiles of coal. So they have a lot of coal sitting on their coal yards uh, at utility sites around the country. Uh, when you have such large supply, uh, obviously that depresses demand or depresses prices rather. Uh, and with demand low, um, you had a recipe for falling thermal coal prices in the United States. Uh, meanwhile, I've preferred to focus on companies leveraged to overseas growth, in particular, very, very fast-growing demand for coal in places like China and India. Uh, I've mentioned that on prior um, um, videos, uh, but essentially, you know, China is building a new coal-fired power plant uh, about once every 10 days. Um, Chinese demand for steel has also soared this year, uh, so met coal uh, demand is very, very strong. India has a very aggressive plan for build out of coal uh, fired power plant capacity, expected to become the uh, largest importer or fastest growing importer of coal in the world here uh, over the next few years. Uh, and, uh, and, and therefore, you know, your Asian demand is very, very strong. I've preferred companies with exposure to Australia, Australia being the key export port, uh, 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 market for both thermal and metallurgical coal into uh, those fast growing Asian countries. Um, but one of the things about Arch's call that was interesting is up until now, the last several quarters, uh, for the reasons I mentioned, they've been pretty, pretty downbeat on the, up, uh, the prospects for uh, their main thermal coal division in the U.S. Uh, this conference call is very, very different. Uh, management was much more upbeat. Uh, they actually boost their earnings forecast for 2010. Uh, and they also said that their metallurgical business, which is much smaller, uh, is really red hot right now. Um, so red hot uh, that they're boosting their ability to produce metallurgical coal from U.S. mines uh, with the uh, goal of exporting probably around two-thirds of their production uh, abroad uh, to serve, again, these, these fast-growing coal markets. But focusing on the thermal side, which has been what's really weak for Arch, um, they noted that thermal coal prices uh, for PRB coal, Powder, Powder River Basin coal, uh, are up about 40 percent from their lows of last year and up 25% since the year started. Um, now that's a big, big shift. Uh, the other thing the company noted uh, is that we had a very cold winter in the U.S. and uh, utilities really burned down their stockpiles, particularly of Powder River Basin coal. Uh, in the U.S. right now, we're about uh, um, uh, 58 days of supply on average at U.S. utilities. Um, and that's uh, actually pretty much uh, uh, just a little bit above average, uh, certainly nothing like the very, very bloated levels uh, we saw October, November of last year. And that's really helped to bring those prices higher. Uh, the other interesting factor is, as many of you are aware, there was a tragedy in West Virginia mine uh, not that long ago uh, where several miners died. Uh, it was an underground mine. Uh, they believe one of the causes is probably a buildup of gas, in particular natural gas or methane. 
Um, and, uh, you know, this isn't the first uh, mining accident we've seen in this country. Some of you remem may remember a few years ago the Sago mine disaster, also in West Virginia. Um, and what this highlights is that what's traditionally been the, the uh, America's largest uh, source of coal production, Central Appalachia or CAP, um, is becoming somewhat troubled. Uh, coal seams are getting much thinner there. Um, this place has been mined continuously. These places have been mined continuously for well over a century. Um, and the other factor is it's very, very dangerous. Um, sending people into deep underground mines uh, means that you have to be very careful about controlling gases underground. Uh, companies have gotten very good at it. Um, the U.S. has a pretty stellar record, um, despite tragedies like what we've seen, of, of mine safety, especially if you compare it to countries like China, but it's still much more dangerous than what's going on, for example, in the Powder River Basin. Um, now what that means is that you're likely to see, as we did after Sago a few years ago, uh, increased oversight and more regulations from the government. Last time around it caused about a 5% hit to mine productivity. Uh, this time it could be even more. Um, and so that's really limiting uh, output and production from Central Appalachia uh, to a great degree. Um, Arch outlined some pretty aggressive numbers. They felt that not only have we seen uh, production in, ca in Central Appalachia currently running down 10% year over year, uh, but we're probably going to see additional production declines as a result of things like these new regulations I just mentioned. Uh, so we have uh, demand coming back, uh, electricity demand in the U.S. coming back, stockpiles coming down, and falling production from Central, Appala Central Appalachia. It's creating a pretty good market for Powder River Basin coal. Powder River Basin coal is going to be able to fill some of the gaps left over from declining production in the East. Um, so this actually makes me incrementally much more positive uh, on companies like Arch with exposure to PRB. Um, Arch still not necessarily my favorite company in, in the U.S., uh, but what it means is that um, I've been uh, sort of neutral to bearish on the U.S. coal miners and I've focused instead, instead on companies with exposure to Australia. Uh, I believe that there's actually opportunities emerging in the U.S. coal markets as well. Um, of course, one of my top plays in this industry uh, has been Peabody Energy. Um, this company, symbol BTU, has concentrated a lot of its uh, work in recent years on Australia, and that's been the real growth driver for them. But it's also important to remember they have a very large uh, Powder River Basin operation. Um, they and Arch are the two main producers out there. So they will probably benefit from some of the trim trends Arch is, and on top of that have uh, exposure to Australia. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, the U.S. coal markets beginning to improve. Uh, international coal markets remain very, very strong. Uh, keep an eye on these stocks. I think the uh, U.S. companies are starting to, uh, starting to really show some improvement. You can probably get, be a buyer in some of those. My favorite remains Peabody Coal with exposure to both the international coal market via Australia as well as the domestic market and in particular the Powder River Basin. Thank you very much.